this is Xane Anderson. Welcome again to the Principal Podcast. Glad to have you here. So today we're going to talk about what I think is a super important principle that I think we get backwards in our culture a lot. So let me just tell you, start out with a story. I, you know, Stephen Covey in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he tells, he tells a story, and I hope I'm telling it right. It may be slightly off here, but I'm going to try to tell it. This guy came up to him after the, he was teaching a seminar. He said something like this. He said, Stephen, I like what you're saying, but every, every situation is so different. Look at my marriage. I'm really worried. My wife and I just don't have the same feelings for each other we used to have. I guess I just don't love her anymore, and she doesn't love me. What can I do? And Stephen Covey responded, you mean the feeling isn't there anymore? Or something like that. He said, yeah, the feeling's not there. We've got three kids. We're concerned about it. What do you suggest? And Stephen Covey just said, love her. And the guy said, I told you, the feeling just isn't there anymore. And Stephen Covey said, love her. And the guy goes, you don't understand. The feeling of love just isn't there. And then Stephen Covey said something like, well, then just love her. If the feeling isn't there, that's a good reason to love her. And I think at this guy point, the guy was kind of confused. And he asked, but how do you love when you don't love? And Stephen Covey, what he said here was really profound. He said, my friend, love is a verb. Love the feeling, which is what you're talking about, is a fruit of love, the verb. So love her, serve her, sacrifice, listen to her empathize, appreciate or affirm her. Are you willing to do that? Now, this concept is something I want to talk about. The concept, and this is a principle, you can lead your feelings with your actions. Now, I'm not trying to hear discount feelings. I'm not trying to say you should never express feelings that are negative. I'm not trying to say that at all. What I'm trying to say is that if in this situation here, if you want to love someone that you're not feeling love for, the best way to do that, or one of the ways to do that, is to lead your feelings with your actions. To act like it before you feel like it, knowing that just like Stephen Covey said, love is a verb. The feeling is the fruit of a verb. Now, I have another friend named Brody, same kind of situation, but different. He said he used to like to do this. I think he called it the Spartacus workout. Now, I'm not, I'm not familiar with it very much, but... I believe I said the right name. It may have been a different workout, but he did this workout that was really hard. It had muscle confusion. It did all kinds of things where when you got done at the end of the workout, most people are super sore. He said, I did this workout. I got to the end of the workout and I hated it. I hated it so much. I wanted to die. I mean, couldn't walk. So sore. He goes, but I committed to do the workouts. So, so he did it again. And he did, then he said he did the workout again and he did the workout again. And each day he did it. He said, it was just, I didn't like doing it. It didn't feel like doing it. But it was really interesting. He kept doing this workout. I believe he did it on a daily or near daily basis every day or near daily. He said, something happened when I got, something happened around week two and a half or three. Here I was doing the workout each day and I hated it. I could barely walk. I wanted to die. It just so made me so sore. I just didn't like it. But around two, week two and a half or three, he goes, something changed. I got to the end of this workout and instead of wanting to die, I wanted to keep doing it. He goes, that day I did it twice. So it happened again the next day. I got to the end of the workout and I felt like I was just getting started. So I did it again. You see, this is the principle where you can lead your feelings. Now, sometimes I think in our society, we're taught whatever you feel, just do it. And I got to tell you, I disagree with that because here's the bad news. Have you ever, have you ever realized that your feelings are like the weather? I mean, you can be mad one moment, you can be laughing, you can be embarrassed, and they can all happen within a really short amount of time. So here's an idea for you. Instead of basing your decisions on how you feel at the moment, I think the key to success uh, may be different. And let me give you an idea. Instead of basing your decisions on your feelings, I think it might be better to, number one, acknowledge that you're not a principal under yourselves, under yourself. So for example, when we, when you talked about in podcast one, and if you haven't listened, take the opportunity to go back and listen to the first podcast, but gravity is just there. Gravity is a principle. Now it's a scientific principle. And we talked about in that first episode, how you could either align with gravity 
and you can build something where gravity helps you like a, like a hydroelectric dam or a ski resort or a skydiving company or a bungee jumping company or a zip line something or other. We came up with a bunch of ideas with how you could make money using gravity, how, how gravity, which is this principle, could act if you align with it, could actually make you money, could, could benefit you. But if you were careless with gravity and you ignored it, you could fall off a cliff and be injured, maybe even die. So you have this principle that's just there that could either make you rich and famous and, and successful or at least wealthy or you know, have a successful business, or it could kill you. Gravity itself doesn't change. Gravity is just there. So when we're making decisions, instead of saying, well, I'm going to base my, my, my decisions on feelings, which is kind of like the weather, they come and go. Maybe a better idea would be the number one, recognize that you're not a principle to, unto yourself. Number two, figure out what the real principles are. I'm talking not just what people think they might be like. What are they really, really? And then make your little tiny daily decisions align with them and not ignore them. And I think when you do that, it's almost like, you know, can you imagine what it would be like to be standing on a, on a huge dam that had just tons and tons of water going through and you can hear the almost rumbling of this, this dam going through. What's happening is gravity is making electricity, you know, tons of electricity and you can feel the power of the gravity almost as it vibrates through that dam. When you align with principles, you almost can feel like you've got these powerful things pushing you, helping you behind you rather than ignoring it. And you're like, it's, you're, it's like flirting with the cliff. You could fall off and be injured or even die, right? You want gravity on your side, not against you. When you have these human relation principles on your side, You've got things behind you that make you almost, it's like you're almost, you're almost unstoppable. So how, find out what the principles are. Realize you're not a principle under yourself. They're bigger than you. Big gravity is bigger than me. It's bigger than you. Number two, align your little decisions. And if you don't feel like doing it, like we talked at the beginning, what's the key? You know, if I know I should love someone, but I'm not feeling it. Maybe I can leave my feelings. If I know I should do something at work, it's the right thing to do, but I'm not feeling it. How do I, do I base the decision on that I'm not feeling it? Or do I base the decision on what's the right thing to do? I think in most situations, um, aligning with the principle is the best thing to do. And I want you to think about that. How can I align my feelings with principles rather than making my choices just based on how I'm feeling at the moment. Think about that and think about maybe how you could teach that principle to your children. Um, I'm a huge believer that most of the problems we see in the world, if you trace them all the way back, go back to families not being strong. People say, well, we need more of this, or we need more of that. We need more social programs or less social programs, more police or less police, more courts or less courts, more of something more or less of something. But if you look at really the problems, most of the problems we have start at the very headwaters, the family. And if we can start to fix marriages and families by just doing little things differently, that's the way we can make the world a better place. And that's my mission. That's what I'm trying to do here today. Thanks for tuning in today to the Principal Podcast. Have a great day. This is X.A. Anderson. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast today. So glad you joined. I am on a mission to help as many marriages and families and parents learn the principles and techniques that are going to help their marriages be better. And one thing I know about you, there are so many of you listening right now that have tips, that have techniques, that if you would just share them with the community, it could help. So please share them with the rest of us, share them with me. We'd love to hear them. Like, comment, subscribe, rate, review. Let's do everything we can to help as many marriages as possible. You know, I'm a huge believer that a wise man, Neil A. Maxwell said, if we don't fix marriages and families, everything else we do will be like straightening deck chairs on the Titanic. I'm sure I didn't quote that right, but it was something to that effect. 
Let's go to the root of the problem and help marriages and families. Feel free to follow me on, on social media. Most importantly, learn to follow Jesus Christ, who is the principal giver. And let's share as much as we can with each other to make this a great community where we can help people. Thanks again for joining.